Mm. Well, as major wildfires grip large parts of Europe, but there are growing fears Australia could also be facing another horror bushfire season. Our next guest knows all too well the disastrous effects a bushfire can have, witnessing the impact the Black Summer fires had on his Tamaruya. Now he's mayor, preparing his community for the worst. Matthew Hatcher, Hatcher joins us now. Uh, Matthew, good morning to you. Thanks for your time. Seeing what's happening in Europe, bringing back uh, a lot of bad memories, I'm sure. Yeah, good morning, Carl. It is. It's um, you know, it's one of those things this whole community lived through. Uh, it's tough for us still now to, uh, to talk about it at times, and um, you know that memory of that the the heat and the smoke that uh, this community and, and all up and down the the east coast of Australia lived with for those uh, months on end uh, is something that's terrifying for the, for the locals. So how do you prepare for what's coming then? Yeah, it's tough. It's been a very dry uh, winter. Um, some of the, the windows where the RFS normally would back burn, they haven't had those windows open because of conditions. So I think everyone is a little bit on edge. We've kind of been on edge every summer waiting, but we know this one's, uh, we're being told by everyone that's going to be the worst at a brace for it. Um, and we really are urging uh, the community to really... Uh, get out and make sure their properties are ready. Well, uh, there's been some complaints from residents that they're not allowed to cut back trees um, and to create fire breaks of their own. Is that true? Yeah, it's it's a tough one. Local council doesn't really try to get into that. It's, it's We're bound by so much state legislation um, around, I guess, tree trimming and cutting. And when it comes to burning on your property, you know, that's really an RFS issue. So, so much of your local council, especially in New South Wales, are bound by the state above us. So... Uh, you know, we work with the controls that we have, unfortunately, and what we're telling residents, uh, you know, is to do everything you can for your property, uh, legally, obviously, uh, but really do make sure that you're preparing, that your family knows the, the evacuation plan, and everyone's ready mm. uh, for what is we're thinking is to come. I mean, this is this is the problem, and this is time and time again, local bureaucracy gets in the way um, of, of responsible residents doing the right thing to protect their own homes. Yeah, it's, it's tough, and, uh, you know, trust me, I've uh, before before my time as mayor, I, I was just like everyone else. And uh, it, so I, 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 just, I see it from a different picture now. So much of it does come from above our local council. You know, we're, we're there for rates, roads and rubbish. And uh, a lot of the legislation that's set at the state level, uh, it doesn't always impact the way it's meant to. But uh, I guess, again, we work with the means we have. The, the, I can't think, as we always do, the RFS, uh, the volunteers that always come together in times of emergency like this. But it's, it's so important that we do really uh, brace ourselves for it and get ready. All right, we'll follow this story. Appreciate you being on. Thank you. Moving on, Victorian firefighters uh, have been given a 12% pay rise and thousands of dollars in cash bonuses under a new wage deal. Uh, Bill, that's a heck of a pay rise. Yeah, congratulations to the union and the firefighters oh. and uh, the Victorian government. Well this, done. This seems to be really heated in Victoria. I mean, I, I don't have any objection to emergency services getting a pay rise if they can get it. Um, Heidi, you? Well, Carl, the issue is that uh, the union was going for 26%, so I guess 12% feels like a much smaller amount and much more in keeping with where the public sector wage cap is at. But there's a $7,000 sign-on bonus. That's been uh, repeated several times. There's been $5,000 sign-on bonuses every time we've done deals with the fire uh, services union over the last couple of uh, EBA negotiations. There's also uh, $2,000 a year as a cash bonus for mm. doing your job. Uh, and there's talk of wanting to share in the efficiencies, any efficiencies and savings made inside the fire service, not banking them against the budget, the union members want to be able to share in oh, well, those savings. Oh, look, Bill, Bill, let's, Bill. Let the little, let's let the little green monsters off our shoulders. Uh, let, let's the jealousy go. First of all, a cash bonus... A cash bonus is less inflationary than baking it into the base rate of pay. So it's not a bad industrial relations solution. You get an improvement in remuneration for the workforce, but it's not baked into the base rate. And also, if the employees are delivering productivity bonuses to the business, why shouldn't they get a share in it? OK, Bill, I mean, the only, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to say one thing, if I can. Bill, um, okay. wage rises can catch like wildfire, right? And, and they are inflationary. Um, you'd have to concede yeah. that. Is this too big? Well, it's below the uh, it puts below the inflation rate. So, how something below the inflation rate can uh, be accused of increasing the inflation rate? I'm not sure. But let's have the discussion in Australia. You know, some of the media are, uh, and and some people, you know, they froth at the mouth and say, "Oh, look, here's a worker getting a pay rise." What about the big corporate bonuses at the top end of town? What about the fact that big banks are making record profits at a time when mortgage holders are crying? But what about the everyday taxpayers, Bill, who feel like they're being treated like ATMs well, for things like well, this? Well, do you know... 
Do you know what? I'd tell you it feels like treated like an ATM, mortgage holders by the big banks. And by the way, next time your mm. kid gets caught in a car or your house catches on fire or you need rescuing, maybe we could just say thanks to them. Oh, I mean, I these know. people we rush do, into danger. Say, no, we do say thanks to them and they yes, are but, but, remunerated very, very effectively, very, and it, very well and, so far. And, why, they're and they're going to be slightly better. More up front, I just two thousand dollars every year I from here say, on in. Because I, I actually, I actually, I actually think they earn it. And good luck to them. I, well, good luck to them. I just want to. Want to why just shouldn't back, the workers share we, in the benefits? Can we backtrack just a little bit where you are mm. absolutely smashing the big banks, Bill? Off you go. <laughs> well, why is it? Why is it that you know we all get outraged about a firefighter who does uh, day and night rosters, who's highly trained, who puts their life on the line? Uh, and yet we get upset if they get a few thousand dollars in an annual bonus, a one-off bonus. Yet we've got the people who are um, at the top end of town, they're making millions, uh, they're not necessarily helping save lives. Mm. And you've got the banks making record profits as mortgage holders of crying tears of blood. All right. So let's... really... Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?